Hello again and welcome to the third and final part of the Early College Program Collage Workshop. I'm artist and SAIC professor Jason Dunda and in this video I'm briefly going to go over history and context, the history and context of collage. Uh, just before we get to that though, a little update. Here's what I've been working on. I've done a dry placement of a couple of other elements in the collage. I think it's kind of working. I don't know if it's done yet, but uh, show me what you've come up with. Uh, our email is uh, at the end of this video. So let's go to the lecture hall and I'm going to show you a few images of collage throughout history. So the traditional Western-centered and male-centered voice of art history says that collage was invented in the early 20th century during the Cubist movement by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. You've probably heard of Pablo Picasso. You may not have heard of Georges Braque before, but that doesn't really matter because that is nowhere near true. Um, there's use of cut and glued paper uh, going back a millennium. Uh, Japanese arts and crafts a thousand years ago used this uh, to uh, tell stories in scrolls. Um, and it's a major, major form of Japanese paper craft right now. It's called chigirie. Um, this is some Japanese paper. Um, there are no existing examples of shigirie from from history from that far back in history, at least. Um, so I'm just showing you an example of, uh, of the paper that's used for it. There's a lot of contemporary examples uh, that you can uh, look up as well. Another really great resource is this video called Collage Before Cubism. It's on a digital magazine called Aeon.co. The link is uh, in, uh, right under the screen here. Um, and um, it's a really fascinating video with far better production values than I bring to my videos. Um, and it's uh, this quick history of uh, collage in four minutes, and it's really, really great. Uh, I highly recommend if you're interested in uh, the origins of collage. But back just for a second to um, sort of the modernist, the 20th century uses uh, of collage, because that's what a lot of uh, fine art collage that you see in museums and galleries has a relationship to. Now, the one thing that I will give to Picasso and Braque is they did name it. They named collage collage. It's a French term. Uh, you see it on the screen there. Papier collé. Papier is French for paper. Collé it means glued, so glued paper, papier collé, collage. Um, now, the 20th century, we also see collage becoming a medium that really, really pushes against established norms in and out of art. Picasso and Braque were actually revolutionary for bringing cheap, disposable, common materials like newspapers and cardboard into the important, expensive, high world of art. Um, at the same time they were working, uh, there was an artist in Germany named Hannah Hoch who was making collages that were highly socially and politically critical and caused her work actually to be banned by the Nazi party for obvious reasons that you can see in these images. Now, collage is actually very, very closely linked in the 20th century and into the 21st century to politics and protest. And you're a part of that if you make collage. So why is that? Well, in order to tackle that question, we have to think about what we often do when we make a collage. We find images in the world and cut them up. We repurpose them. We make them our own. This is the work of John Stazacker. He's a contemporary artist, so he's working and living right now. He uses old Hollywood lobby cards and promotional photos, and he combines them with old postcards and um, images that look like they come from National Geographic. Um, now, there's nothing overtly political about these images like there is in the work of Hannah Hoch, but, there's, but he's doing something fundamentally countercultural. Um, and you're doing it too if you make collage. You're taking something from the world that you're not supposed to, that you're supposed to consume, and you're saying, no, I'm not going to consume this. I'm going to produce from this. Essentially, you're doing something to the image that it's not designed to do, even though the image or part of the image is still there in your work. That's countercultural. That's you imposing yourself on a thing that's already perceived as complete. You're being revolutionary. You're being a rebel here. This is what we talk about when we talk about the context of collage. The easiest way to define context is to say it's about the associations that are made with a thing that, and, and these things we can't escape or deny when we think about this thing. You can't deny that you're taking something from the world and remixing it when you make a collage, right? And whatever you do, whatever kind of collage you do, that's always the thing that exists as an idea within the work because your materials and your techniques have ideas associated with them. The, so, so this is the work of uh, Wangeshi Mutu, a Kenyan artist who makes uh, these, these fractured and kind of frightening yet beautiful bodies out of cut-up magazines. Uh, when she talks about her work, she talks about her creation actually as a form of destruction. Uh, 
uh, a destruction of the images that she uses. She uses a lot of images from fashion magazines. So she wants to destroy the hierarchy of, of gender and of race that are in these fashion magazines um, in order to uh, 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 critique and, 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 and uh, express her thoughts and her feelings about the world. Um, so she's using the magazines to fight the politics of the magazines. And in the process, she's making this gorgeous work. Here's a few other artists that I want you to know about very, very quickly. Um, Martha Rosler, Arturo Herrero, Romari Bearden. And with all of these artists, there's something familiar yet unfamiliar about what it is that they're doing. You know, you can recognize where some of these images come from, but there's something unfamiliar in how they're put together, right? There's, there's sometimes they, they, they come together really, really nicely. Arturo Herrera is really, really homogenous and really, really lovely. Um, Martha Rosler, those figures do not go together. Fashion and torture do not go together. So there's something, there's something of the remnant of the thing that they took from the world, but they filtered it through their own hand and their own thoughts. I want you to look for that in your own work, and I want you to be conscious of what, you, of what you're saying. You're always saying something about the world when you make art in this way.